This is a video response or uh, a little video session um, uh, explaining uh, the idea of ground reaction force in uh, rotational sport, in particular in golf swing. And this is just a quick, quick overview, kind of simplistic way to think of it. But it's it's in response to an email, or uh, I should say, video that was um, uh, put online uh, by James Hong describing what um, what he referred to as the lower body when on an unstable surface or on a slippery surface actually turning the opposite way of which you're intending to try to rotate. Um, and he explained it really well, uh, but uh, uh, there was um, uh, a question about the science behind it, you know, kind of the science, scientific principles behind it. So I thought I would just do a quick video response. I did answer uh, real quickly on the um, uh, on Facebook, on, you know, in the, in the comment section, but I thought I would just do a quick video just to try to explain it because it's, it's really, it's fundamental um, and it's, it's, it's basic, but it's really important to understanding uh, what the lower body is doing and in understanding what the lower body is doing, um, maximizing the effort for not only movement efficiency, but, but really power. So the first thing to, to sort of understand or know about um, what we could refer to as ground reaction or the ground foot or foot ground interface is how how forces are applied. So let's just draw, let's say we're going to hit the ball this direction. Let's draw our left foot here, our right foot here, okay? The first thing to understand is that our body pushes into the ground, okay? So let's say if our body pushes this direction and our other foot, let's say, pushes this direction, What's affecting movement is the ground reaction to that force. So if I push against something, as long as I, I don't slide, then whatever I'm pushing against, as long as it's not moving, so if I push against this wall with a certain amount of force, the wall pushes back with equal and opposite force. So the ground, so if this is our, our foot force being applied, the ground will push back with equal and opposite force. So this is our ground, and we call that the ground reaction force. Okay, so you've got the force of the, the foot pushing into the ground and the equal and opposite uh, force being applied by the ground back into the foot. It's this force that we use to move. So we've got this equal and opposite force, the ground reaction force, and again, it's the ground reaction force that we use to move. So what happens when you um, want to say, for example, rotate your body this way, is what I'm gonna do with my feet is I'm gonna push in this direction. So in other words, if I'm just trying to rotate like this, and if I wanna rotate that way, I'm actually gonna push this way, okay? So if there's nothing resisting, if you're standing on something slippery and your feet just slide, they don't grip the ground where the ground can actually push back, then your feet are just going to turn this direction because you are applying this kind of a force. All right? Now, if when, you, when the ground pushes back, when I push this way, so when, in other words, I'm literally pushing this direction, the ground pushes back this direction, and that's how I'm able. So if I push into the ground this direction or like this, the ground pushes back like this and creates a force couple. So let's look at that as far as what's happening when I push against the ground. The ground pushes back and creates what we call a force couple or torque. Let's look at a beam. Let's pretend our hips or our pelvis is a beam. The ground reaction force, I'll keep that color being green. The ground reaction force presses against this end of the, the pelvis and it's translated through the foot, to the ankle, to the knee, and through the, the lower limb, all the way to the pelvis, to the hip, okay? And this ground reaction is pushing back this way. So what I create is a torque or what we call force couple and that's important to understand so the ground reaction creates the movement this way by us basically pushing the opposite direction well why is that so important well the first thing to understand about that is and why it's so important in the golf swing is that first the thing to understand is that it's the ground reaction to us pushing into the ground that allows us to move so what number one we have to have a good foot to ground interface which means our foot needs to be it can't slip if our foot slips, we won't generate the same force because we may push hard against the grass or the ground, but if our foot slips, the ground doesn't push back with equal and opposite force. So number one, we have to have good friction. So why do golfers 
really without thinking, when they go on a swing real hard, why do they look like they're squatting down? Because they're pushing down to create more friction, better ground interface, okay? If I just stand up tall and try to create a lot of torque, I don't have the same downward friction, I'm, I'm not going to be able to create the same amount of force because I risk slipping. Okay. The second thing to understand is they have to be in good balance. If I'm rocking to the outside of my foot or back on my heel lifting my toe or I'm rocking to the outside of this foot or up on the toe or back on the heel, I'm not able to push as hard or as effectively into the ground and I'm not able to push in the directions that I need to create an effective force couple. So our foot, our balance and our interactive, our connection to the ground through the feet, through the shoe, into the ground is extremely important uh, in creating movement and in creating power. Okay, and then the last thing that we'll look at, let me just redraw this picture. Um, I just kind of make do with what I have here. The other thing to consider is the direction of the force. So if I'm pushing against the ground this way, okay, and the ground's pushing back at this this direction, the direction of that force and the direction of this force at crucial times in the swing is absolutely critical. Because if you just look at it from a very simplistic standpoint, a beam, you create the highest level torque, not when you're pushing like this, but when you're pushing perpendicular to the axis of rotation. All right, so when you push perpendicular to the surface of the beam, you create a larger torque or a larger force couple. If you push to the side and you create, a, a, you know, there's some vertical component, but then there's some horizontal or shear component, you don't get the same amount of torque, okay? So what, why is that important? Well, the ground reaction force pattern then contributes to the ability to create speed by creating a force couple. And what we want is as the as the lower body begins to accelerate, we want our, the forces applied to this beam to be as close to perpendicular as possible as the pelvis is moving and accelerating. And that, that peak force application, or um, uh, not only the amount, but the direction of that force, has to occur at a very specific point in time in the swing. It's very, very early in the downswing that that needs to occur. So we need to be able to develop the ability to stay connected to the ground, to push hard against the ground, in other words, great, create connection and friction, and to push so in an appropriate pattern that allows us to create speed. Otherwise, we're wasting our time, we're wasting our energy. Probably one of the most difficult things to get right in the golf swing is our lower body ground reaction force pattern or our lower body um, uh, mechanical uh, pattern. Right? So when you get this down, everything else starts to fall in line. Um, once you're able to create this power, create this speed, move in an appropriate way, uh, you then have a power source that then you can translate through the body to the club. And again, that becomes the secondary problem. The primary problem is getting it started, and that is effectively using ground reaction force to create power or to create speed.